Salvete Spectators, it's Master Post back in Europa Universalis 4 with our Kistil tutorial campaign and I want to round things up. The exploration is the last thing last thing I want to explain to you. And then you should have a nice overview over what you need to know to not fail instantly in the game. And therefore we'll pick our exploration guy who is already exploring but he's on his mission so I cannot control him at the moment and he explores the Caribbean and well we have already some land explored unfortunately Portugal colonized this island here Cap Verde, Verde. Um, let's get to the colonial map mode this one shows us the range that is necessary to get to colonize some provinces and Green one, green means that we can go there. Whereas red one, red provinces like these won't allow us to colonize because the range is too big. If you want to know your colonial range, ooh, we have some big negative stability I see right now. This gives us severe penalties as you can see here. Especially the national unrest plus four is bad and the legitimacy is also bad. Let's see how much it costs. It it's not that expensive actually, religious unity mm, gives us some penalties and I don't think, no, we would have too little power to convert these provinces that are in Africa and Granada. The quest of the new world. After the conquest of Granada, yes, Spain was filled with veterans and warriors of the faith with nothing to do and many deeds. Uh, needs. Deeds and needs would be fulfilled as Cortes and Pizarro started out the, to conquer South and Central America. All these people became the hacienda owners and trader barons of the New World, bringing wealth both into their own pockets and the vaults of the Spanish treasury. A uh, new reconquista, we need conquistadors. Conquistador becomes available for duty, gain 50 military power. Explorer becomes available for duty, so problem is we already have too much military guys, meaning that we will suffer for our sword mana income, military power income. That means we already have to disband one and, well, let's say we need an explorer. That gives us another one. Wow, this is, holy crap, five maneuver. This means that he's much quicker at exploring these territories, so that's actually quite nice. I think I can suffer two out of one, but we will disband Esteban de Castille. Does this one... Huh, this guy doesn't have a name apparently. Interesting. I've never seen that before. <laughs> this guy doesn't have a name. Nice. Let's check. I will cut three guys over here. Loose and make another treasure hunting or exploration fleet and with this guy we'll explore the Caribbean islands. The coast of Amazonas, the coast of Caribbean and when the other guys come back I'm gonna disband them because we already have much trade power here I don't need these guys to protect it much further. 70% is nice. Portugal has the rest. So, bridge unrest, uh, it's not that good actually. And we already have this guy who decreases the provincial unrest by three. So if we click on it, we can see revolt in 20 years, 10 years. Ah, never mind that. We have a nice army going. Let's check our force limits. That's all right. Glory Road. It's a promising land. There are some of these random effects where there is an increase, decrease in base tax or aggressiveness or ferocity of the guys and I mean, it's not that big of a deal. We can go west to India. Uh, what was the, the goal here? I didn't remember. But we got a boost to our settler chance and global settler increase, that's nice. Spain must be Christian, that's, this is a flavor mission. And then the nation of Granada will cease to exist. This is interesting. Uh, but we are a far 
far way away from <laughs> converting these provinces down here, so establish colonies on the mainland. At least one province in the Spanish main. What? Is there some kind of typo error? At least one province in the Spanish main. What the hell does this mean? Or Italian ambition. Let's check regions and this one's called the Caribbean, yeah, as I expect. The Spanish main. Okay. I have no idea what they mean by that. I, I would expect something in America, but I don't know what the Spanish main does uh, means. Is it a name? Is it? I don't know. So let's let's select this one. Would be nice for Granada to lose their course here, so they cannot be released if we lose a war, which won't happen. But you never know. So let's increase stability here to zero, and then immediately all the revolt risk goes away. And because we're a Western nation, we don't have that big of a shortage on points. Only thing that's really important is military points. If we fall behind in Diplo and Admin, it's not that important. But military is very important. If we lack two, three technologies, maybe we have such a big disadvantage in fighting that... Well, excellent. We can actually colonize the Caribbean. So let's... What, what do we have to do when we want to colonize? We click on a free green province that is not occupied by any, any guy, any nation. And there are a few parameters you'll have to check. First is the base tax. This will be the tax that is afterwards displayed like over here, the base tax value. So if you compare these two, you want to go to Trinidad because it's more valuable than Orinoco Delta. There are two other factors. The travel time may be important. The religion is no problem because once your colonists have arrived, they will change it to your colony, uh, your religion, ours would be Catholic. Hmm. The other two factors who are important are these three things here. Natives is the number of guys who live there, the aggressiveness and the ferocity. The aggressiveness well, you can read for yourselves, means how often they will attack and the ferocity is how strongly they will fight and is also dependent on the native's numbers. So we will select, let's check first the range of our colonies. We have, I want to colonize in the Caribbean, so we let's check the trade first. This is the Caribbean trade node, outgoing to directly Sevilla, so we want if, if we want to go to Brazil, outgoing Ivory Coast, we wouldn't be able to pull trade to us directly. So I'm going to go for Caribbean first. It's very valuable. Here you can see important natural harbor. It's something like an important trade center. But unfortunately, we cannot go there yet because our range isn't sufficient enough. Mm, then you'll have to check the colonial regions map mode. This means when you have enough that is five colonies in one region, they will form a kind of semi-independent nation, like a vassal to you that is a colonial nation. And so if we split our colonies between, for instance, colonial Colombia and colonial Caribbean, they won't be able to form something here. Even if we have five nations rightly there, we would, uh, five provinces, five colonies here, we would, have, we would need five colonies over here in the same green node. So once again, let's check the base text. I think that's the most important factor. Six, 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 six. They are all very valuable. Wow. Interesting. These guys are a little bit less valuable. So everything has six here. So let's check the one that has the... You know what? Let's just go over to Trinidad. It's also historically a Spanish. And I think it's an independent nation as of now. And they should speak Spanish there. Trinidad and Tobago. I think this is Tobago. In the World Championship in football, they play sometimes, I believe. But I'm not sure. Okay, we could recruit some docks or some armories, but let's hold off for that a little bit. 
Let's wait until... Oh no, this fleet comes back. They have to finish exploring some stuff over here. And yes, I'm losing military power, but as you can see here, we are nearly finished. We are have already nearly finished the Archibus. Gives us military tactics, combat with an infantry shock. Infantry shock is that our infantry fights stronger. Tactics is a little bit ambiguous. It basically also increases the overall strength of your army, how well they perform. And combat with is how many units can be put up on the front line. The base value is 15 and we have now 22. With the level 6 we'll have 24, so we can put a larger army to use more efficiently. We have one free diplomat, so I'm gonna do something with him. For instance, increase relations with Aragon. The relations are not that good actually. We can improve them to 200. And then we have a general decision to make. Natives encountering our colonies. We could repel the savages which would give us immediately population gain in Trinidad and hmm I don't know maybe this is not the be the worst idea before that I always took allow them to live in peace because it w this would uh, uh, um, result in a high chance that some of these guys assimilate and then the colony gets a boost present trade proposal we would gain one base tax in Trinidad Hmm. Not big of a deal because we will lose this province eventually to the colonial nation. So let's allow them to live in peace. I I always go with that actually. Then we need to protect the colony from the rebels, uh, the natives that may attack. And because the aggressiveness is extremely high, they will attack multiple times before the colony has finished. Now we sent a colonist, this guy over here which took us around 100 days or so. And then he will pimp up the population up to a thousand. Once it reached a thousand, the colony will become an independent province. Not dependent on the colonies that is, uh, colonists, that is. So on its way there, we'll have to protect them by soldiers. Let's select, for instance, two calf and three infantry should be enough. Five, that's good. We have 12 transport ships, that's alright. Let's put them in there and get your lazy asses over here protecting the colony. Alright, so we have established our first colony in the Caribbean and we will expand further. Okay. This guy has finished exploring. So we. Oh. No, that's the good one, actually. Shit. The bet. Wait a second. Wait a second. I'm going to disband this guy, right? Dismiss him. So we'll only have two out of one. That's all right. Hmm. I could go over 25 power projection. Projection that would give us another leader slot, and that could be obtained by just insulting one of our rivals. Let's pull back this guy and do that. This, these three ships will join the civilian trade protection. Let's insult France, for instance. Look here. Excellent. We have now 28. This means we have two out of two, which means we don't have a penalty on military power. Are you kidding me? What the hell? This guy was in our service for maybe one year? And he dies a day after I disband the other explorer? This is, this is, this is a joke, right? <sighs> Holy crap. Now these guys don't have a uh, explorer and they suffer attrition because they are somewhere outside of range, so let's move them to our colony. A not finished colony can already be used as a 
port, that's good. And, oh, it was an event that the leader will die. Something with a war or poison or something like that. And here we have to, to choose between gaining aggressiveness in some province or losing diplo power. I'm gonna go with that, of course. And the explorer died because of an event, so that's possible. Normally they don't die just after one year or something like that. So it would, would be stupid. It's, we have to spend now 50... Uh, I hate it. 50 Diplo points for another leader. And we have 50 Naval Tradition. This should give us a nice chance of getting a good guy. Uh, 3 is okay. But we suffered attrition, so let's repair the, the fleet first. Then we're gonna go... Finishing... North America, South America, North America, North America, Europe. Let's check where trade flows. Okay, we can collect from Ivory Coast, Caribbean. Hmm. So, North America is off limits for us. We cannot steer trade towards Sevilla from North America. This should resemble the historical balances and like colonizing theaters. France and England went north and Spain and Portugal went south and so therefore the game implemented that we can only steer trade from the southern provinces or regions. So we can collect from Ivory Coast which means Ivory Coast collects from Brazil. So we could colonize Brazil and Ivory Coast but let's check other options. Incoming from Caribbean is Amazonas, Mississippi. So actually we can colonize up here because it will flow to the Caribbean. Mexico, Panama and Ivory Coast. Interesting, Ivory Coast flows also to Caribbean, okay. But Amazonas makes the most sense. I'm gonna go... Mm, or maybe also... Mississippi. We'll have to check where the most valuable provinces are, but... These three guys will explore the coast of Amazonas, like this. Okay, so far so good. We could put our explorer over here, but it doesn't make sense. You can, with your colonial army, attack the savages, which means that you kill all of them. Which means they won't revolt anymore, so you free up 5k of your units in this case, but you won't have the chance of assimilation. So, no, when I have enough troops and I'm not uh, afraid of being attacked in the mainland, and I don't need these troops here, I'll leave them and they will assimilate and boost our colony quickly up. So, there's that. Base tag somewhere and the same thing with the prestige over here. I'm going to increase our stability once more, because although it costs 15 more than usual. We could pick another guy. Colonial range plus 2, doesn't make sense anymore. We have so much income that it doesn't make a difference. Toledo is the seat of a new cardinal. Let's check the papacy. Oh, France has more cardinals than we do, that's bad. We have now Cardinals in Madrid, Asturias and Toledo. Asturias is not that valuable actually. Okay, I don't know why, for instance... Wait a second. Why in Sevilla there is no Cardinal, although the base value is 8, and in Asturias, Asturias there is one, because how the Cardinals are distributed comes by the base tax. Okay, we have a 9.1 chance of receiving a cardinal in Andalusia. This is right here. But, okay, there are of course a lot of other nations that want to get a cardinal. Orléane in France, which has also eight base tags. Okay, never mind that. Let's research the Archibuse. It gives us a nice military bonus. Now we have six and we are actually ahead of our neighbors here, and of course, much ahead of these crap nations down here. I want to annex you guys. 
we have to wait until December 1472. This is only a, not not a whole year actually. Let's improve relations with the papacy once more. Can never hurt. Do we have a diplo slot free? No, we don't. One, two, three, four. Actually, okay, we don't have normal. Al well, Portugal is an ally of us, so let's. They're at war with France. Interesting, because they're allied with England, I believe. Yes. Okay. If you are Castile and you want to dominate the colonial game and as well as the Iberian Peninsula, you could always not ally Portugal but declare war on them. By the way, they get raped by France at this point. If some nation asks you for access, just always allow it because otherwise you'll get a diplomation hit. Except, of course, when you have strategic interests in mind. If you manage to kill Portugal off before the colonizing fun starts, for instance, taking these two islands from them in an early war, you can dominate the colonization game completely as Castile, because when England and France go to North America, it will be like 1550 or something like that, or even 1600. And at this time you should have dominated all the coastlines and you can block off everything. So we get actually from ideas, two colonists of the exploration ideas. One colonist from our Intercetra national idea. Another colonist from expansion ideas. We'll pick that of course. And then there is also a colonist obtained somehow if we combine expansion with quantity. Look down here, the, the second last bonus for finishing expansion and quantity gives us global setter increase and colonist. So we'll actually have five colonists as a, as a whole, that would be nice. Actually. Sweet, we can increase our stability or gain some power. Of course, we go with stability. It resembles more than a hundred admin points, which is nice. Portugal gets destroyed, but you cannot really do anything to Portugal because they have complete dominance over their course. There is no other nation in there. The culture and the religion is very homogeneous and Nobody can fabricate on Portugal, so France can't do anything to them except maybe forcing them to give them money, okay. And Portugal is the earliest colonizer, they usually, if you play Portugal you could colonize the islands and then Brazil very quickly. And you normally do that, so... Portugal is, Portugal is one of the easiest nations to play, you cannot screw up at all except you due to some mad reason declare war on Castile or anything like that, but normally they are friendly towards you. We have a historical friendship that won't go away. I don't know how long it takes, but the historical friend plus 25 stays for a long, long time. And actually now we can explore something else. The waters of Panama, maybe. This will explore further inland here, and we want to eventually expand into Mexico and Central America it's general. Let's check. Our colony is well underway. If we have like for instance Arctic climate or tropical climate this decreases the growth of the province but hmm, I, I would have thought that like Trinidad is in a tropical climate apparently it's not at least in the game so we don't have a penalty here and there Oh, 225-35. The colony is growing rapidly. We could recall the colonist and send him somewhere else, but this would explode the costs. Look here, the colony's maintenance already costs 2.25. And would decrease the growth of this colony. So, not very advisable, except you really, really want to push the colony game. Once we have finished that colony, the new colonial range will be calculated from this province. So. Once you have established one colony, colonial range won't matter at all anymore because then we'll have like all of us available. Now we have like a colonial range of this and then we'll have one of this. So all of America should be open to us. Blah blah blah. 
Now we can re answer, unlock research land of opportunity, global set rank increase plus 20. Very sweet actually. Now plus 65 per year and random events of course increase it too. When the population hits roughly one third of a thousand, the trade good that will be produced in this province, these guys, will be calculated somehow, I don't know how, some maybe very very complicated algorithm, I have no idea, but it's it's divided into prov into regions, so here in the Caribbean there would be maybe sugar or spices or cacao or some or coffee, something like that. You won't find like grapes or what, what's it called? Wine. You won't find wine in here. So that's that. Of course you want gold because gold gives a massive boost to our income. Let's explore... Um, okay. Chesapeake Bay, Rio... Let's go over here. Where are you going? The Gulf of St. Lawrence. Okay, I think. And this would be all for this episode. I think I'm going to end the series here because there's not much more I can tell you and we're well on the way. You know how to build colonies, you know how to fight, you know how to play the diplomatic game and as you can see here we are easily one of the most powerful nations in the game with the overlordship over Aragon and Naples. Let's check, just check our armies. 15,000 troops, 9,000, 7,000 with our more than 30,000. We have like 50, 60,000 troops. The Ottomans are also most of the time quite strong. So is Poland because they have an overlordship over Lithuania. Moscow is also very strong but the good thing is these guys always war over each other. The other big blob is Austria and France. Sometimes England can get big, but they're not very powerful at this point. Native uprising. You can see here that some natives attacked us, but we will repel them easily because they are crap at fighting. So even maybe 3,000 or even 2,000 troops would be enough there. Last but actually not least, the Spanish, Portuguese, French and English have a nice extra skin when they're in the new world. Let's have a look here so you can see. They, they are the standard skins. Not very specific, but in the new world they get sweet looking like conquistador helmets and some other armor stuff. Okay, thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed this series, I hope I could teach you something. And, well, stay tuned to my channel, thank you all for watching and see you soon.